the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Concerto of Death. For the audience gathered at Symphony Hall, it was a beginning, the start of a promising career for a brilliant young violinist. But for the tall, angular musician spotlighted in the center of the stage, it was an ending, the final triumphant movement of a life's concerto that had opened with a melancholy theme, progressed through a somber adagio, and was reaching its climax now, tonight in the glittering atmosphere of the concert hall. Yes, Victor Carroll, American violinist, was making his debut. But the theme that had run through his entire life's concerto had its beginning many months before. In Italy, after the end of the war, in a tiny, austere cottage that clung to the terraced hillside above a war-weary village. It began with American Sergeant Victor Carroll and an old Italian named La Vertu. And so you have come, my boy, to tell me you are leaving Italy. I'm afraid so, maestro. Our orders came through this morning. We're sailing at dawn. See, si, see, si, I have expected it. But now that it comes, it is uh, no less uh, sad. <laughs> I will miss you, Victor. These uh, talks we have had, uh, hearing you play, ah, you know, you have a great uh, talent, my son. A great uh, talent for the violin. Do you really think so, maestro? With so little time to practice, my fingers have been all tied up in knots. Oh, that is nothing. And to prove the confidence I have in you, I will show you something. Something very few people have ever seen. You wait, you, you see. Plain black wooden box. But when I open it, there, you look. It's why it's uh, Stradivarius. Ah, Stradivarius. No, no, my boy. An Amati, then? No, 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 not Amati. He's a finer, a finer violin even than Amati or Stradivarius. But Del Gesù. This is a Del Gesù. Del Gesù. Why, oh, that's impossible. There are only a few in the world. There's one at the museum, Genoa. I saw it. See, si, see, si, but uh, this is another Del Gesso. It has uh, been the treasure of my family all of these years. My great, great, great grandfather, <laughs> Del Gesso, made it for him when he was only a child. Maestro, may I... Would you allow me to... Play it? Yes, my boy. I want you to play it. Uh, 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 careful, eh? <laughs> uh, there, now. No, 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 wait, wait. Oh, not that kind of music for this violin, no. Here, let me show you. 
there, inside, you see. It is a marked leggero, uh, soft, light. Del Gesù made this violin for a child. It's meant for a lullaby, like a Brahms lullaby. You listen. It's beautiful. Beautiful. With a violin like that, I could... You say something, my boy? Maestro... You have no family, no one close to you. You're very... Well, you don't have many years to live. Ah, the violin will be buried with me, if that is what you're thinking. But an instrument like that, beauty like Listen that... Listen to me. Ah, Victor, I have thought of it many times. I will leave my Del Gesù for the whole world to enjoy, I have said to myself. But they would only put it in a museum. They would place on it a price... The value of music, measured in the dollars. No, 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 no. I've protected with my life. My Del Gesù will die with me. No. No. Victor, what is it? You look it's at the me. The violin, it can't die with you. It mustn't. I think I should not have shown you the Del, 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 del Gesù, Victor. You're right, maestro. You shouldn't have shown it to me. Drexel Roger, Private 3594236. Any perfume, silk, jewelry, furs? Nope. Okay. Next. Carol Victor, Sergeant, 3472017. Any perfume, silk, jewelry, or furs? No. Okay. No, oh, wait. Yeah? What's that in that old black box? Just a, a violin. A fiddle? Yeah, a fiddle. Huh. You guys will pick up the darn this junk. Okay, go, boy. With the prologue of Concerto of Death, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Friends, you've been hearing a lot about improved tires, but tonight I want to tell you about a completely new type tire just announced this month in the Saturday Evening Post. And now at your signal dealers. It's the new eight-rib super deluxe tire by Lee of Conshohocken, a name famous for over 40 years for top quality. And believe me, you can actually see and feel the extra quality in this new Lee super deluxe tire. You can see the extra rubber in the broad, flat eight-rib tread that's packed with so much extra mileage, Lee gives you a 15-month guarantee against road hazards, plus a lifetime guarantee against defects. And you can feel the difference in quicker stopping and greater non-skid protection, in easier steering and turning, and the way they absorb road shocks. Oh, but here's the best part. These new Lee Super Deluxe tires not only cost nothing extra, but right now, signal dealers are offering special trade-in allowances plus liberal credit terms. That's why any way you look at it, for quality or value, your best tire buy today is the new 8-rib Super Deluxe Lee tire at Signal Service Stations. And now, back to the Whistler. Italian theme of Victor Carroll's life concerto ended as he walked up the gangplank and stared out across the silent water that reached white-capped fingers toward the United States. But the second movement was not long in beginning. No, Victor. The first notes were struck as you walked out of the Army Separation Center and saw a familiar face focused on yours. Your wife, Peggy. And you wonder how you'll explain the priceless Del Gesu you carry in the little black box. Vic! Vic, over here! No, excuse me. Take it easy, man. Now, pardon me. Oh, Vic! Hello, Peggy. Hello, Vic. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you're back. 
I was afraid you might not recognize me. That you might have changed. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, it's been a long time, Vic. And I love you even... Even more than I did. Oh, Vic, I'm so happy. Peggy. Yes, darling. Peggy, I have changed. You... Well, Vic, what do you mean? My fingers are stiff. I've hardly touched a violin. I've forgotten everything I knew about playing. Oh, is that all? Come on, let's get out of this crowd. It'll come back to you, darling. In a few weeks, you'll be better than you ever were. And besides, I... I got a surprise for you. Oh, I wasn't going to tell you until we got home, but... Vic, remember that room in the attic where we used to store trunks and things? Uh-huh. Well, I had it made over into a studio. You won't even recognize it. They put in a big window that looks out over the ocean. You'll be able to practice there and nobody will bother you. It'll be all yours. Well, Vic. Sounds wonderful, Peggy. Oh, darling, we'll be so happy now. You'll have your music and I'll have you... Nothing else can come between us ever. Now, let me help with your things. How about this black box? Can I carry it? The... Yes, Peggy. You can carry it. You follow her to the car, still feeling like a stranger somehow. Still wondering how much you can tell her, if anything. Outside, pulling away from the curb, you happen to glance back. A dark little man in a striped suit and crushed felt hat is looking after you, staring curiously. You're certain you've seen him before, but you're not sure just where. You twist around in the seat to get a better look. But Peggy swings the car around a corner, and he's lost from sight. Everything all right, dear? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Everything's fine. been home over three weeks now. We've asked you over several times. Clint's so anxious to see him and... Well, yes, I know, Lisa. Is something wrong? Is Vic mad at us? Have we done No, anything? no, it's... Well, Vic hasn't wanted to see anyone or be around anyone. I guess it's the war. Something that happened over there. We've got to give him a chance to... A chance to come back to us. Of course, dear. Yes. Oh, it's lovely. He plays up there for hours, alone like that. I, I, I told you I built a studio for him in the attic. Mm-hmm. I, Lisa, I'm afraid I, I, I just don't understand him. You poor kid. And you know it's funny. But I've never been inside the studio since he came home. What's he hiding up there? The stolen crown jewels or something? Oh, someday Vic will come out of whatever's bothering him. Then I suppose we'll all have a good laugh about it. Of course, dear. I'm sure we will. Morning, Peggy. Oh, hello, Vic. What are you doing? Oh, just, just looking through this photograph album you brought back. Who are these people here? Oh, people from the village. They loved having their pictures taken. The, the girls are rather attractive, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. This one here next to you. She's very pretty. What's her name? Oh, I forget. Uh, Amelia, Nella, I, I don't know why. Oh, oh, nothing. Vic, you practiced late last night. Yes, I did work late. I, I waited for you till three this morning. Vic, won't you give up your music for a while, a few days, take a vacation? We could go away for a while. Why don't you ask me to die? Is, is your violin that important to you? I haven't told you, Peggy. But I've been practicing for something very special. Not that I had much hope every violinist in town has been after it. After what, Vic? Dr. Kruvitz announced he's going to play the Max Bruch Concerto in G minor at the opening concert of the season. And he's going to use a new young violinist. He's heard you play. No, 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 not yet, but he will. You see, they've had auditions for a month, and the board finally narrowed it down to six. Kruvitz will make the final choice next week. Oh, Vic. Then that's why you've been shutting yourself up, practicing so hard. 
Oh, he'll pick you, I know. Listening to you last night, well, it was so beautiful that I, I, I almost couldn't believe it. You know, Vic, the music sounds different when you're upstairs. As if there was something or someone... Vic? Yes? Was there someone else? A girl in Italy? Someone you remember? Someone you played to at night there in the attic? Oh, I know it may be foolish, but sitting here alone night after night, nothing to do but look at the window. Vic, I'd like to know... Look, I... look out the window now, Peggy. Please, Vic, I'm asking you something. No, there across the street, a little man, a little man in the striped suit. You see him? I noticed him the day we drove away from camp. A little man? Yeah. He's gone. Vic, don't try to throw me off. Answer my questions. Tell me what happened in Italy, won't you? And the black box. What about the black box? What's in it, Vic? Tell me, please. Is it keepsake memories of her? Vic, where are you going? Upstairs. No. No, Vic. You can't just walk out every time I ask you something. I won't let you. Let me go, Peggy. Vic, I... I want to come into your studio, listen to your play. I want to share, Vic, whatever it is. There's nothing to share, Peggy, nothing at all. I'm working. I audition for Kruvitz tomorrow, you know that. I'm coming upstairs with you, Vic. No. No, you're not, Peggy. You're going to stay down here. Because if you ever go into that room, I... I'll leave you. Did you hear me, Peggy? I'll leave you. It's the next day that you've been waiting for, isn't it, Victor? The day when you and a handful of others assemble in an empty, half-darkened auditorium. Wait around in the wings until Dr. Kruvitz is ready to hear you play. You become more and more nervous as the hours go by, listening to the others one by one as they step out on the stage to play for Kruvitz. Then, finally... I'm sorry you've had to wait so long, Mr. Carroll. That's all right. I don't mind. Dr. Kruvitz has a bad habit of forgetting all about time. I hope waiting here hasn't made you nervous. No, 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 it's all right. See, I've been waiting years for an opportunity like this anyway. <laughs> of course. Well, if you want to take your violin and step out on the stage with me, oh, sure. I'll introduce you to him. It's him. Oh, <laughs> well, Dr. Kruvitz does look rather formidable. No. But don't worry. No, not Dr. Kruvitz. The little man in the striped suit at the back of the theater. What he... are you talking about? I don't see anyone. He ducked back into the shadows. I'm sorry, I can't stay. I, I can't. Mr. No, Victor, you can't wait. You remember now, don't you, where you first saw this strange little man in the striped suit? It was in Italy, at Maestro La Virtus. You're certain of it. But you hurry home to look in the photograph album and make sure. Yes, there it is. The same round, dark face staring up at you from the photograph. His name comes back to you now, Dino Brovelli. You saw him many times at La Vertu's place. I'll get it, Vic. No, 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 wait, Peg. Dr. Kruvitz. Well, 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 do I just stand here or do you ask me oh, in? Well, of course, come in. So, so you are the young man who is so impatient, the young man who cannot wait, not even for Kruvitz. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Ah, and who is this? Oh, oh, excuse me. This, this is my wife. Dr. Kruvitz. Oh, do, my dear. So you're married. I approve of marriage. Well, why did you run out on me, Karen? Come, 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 an explanation. Well, I... Well, I it's, know, it's just... I know. I... You heard all this playing, and you were nervous. Well... A good musician should be nervous. Perhaps even you felt inferior to some of them. A good musician should be humble. And perhaps you were angry with me for making you wait so long. <laughs> a good musician should have fire. So, you may be a good musician. We shall find out. Get the fiddle. Come on. Get the fiddle. Wait here right of now. Of course, of course. Why do you think I come? I'm a thoughtless old man. I do things stupidly. Six musicians all at once, one after the other. Ah, such noise. Who could play? Who could sound well? But here, perhaps, one of them will play and will sound well. Huh, Mr. Carrot? You 
do play well, don't you, Victor, in spite of the fear in your heart? Yes, and Kruvitz listens carefully. Occasionally a frown crosses his face, but the greater part of the time his head bobs up and down in silent approval. He seems impressed, yet you can't be certain, and you wonder what the final decision will be. Then the following morning you're summoned to his office. As you enter, Dr. Kruvitz is standing by the window, his hands clasped behind him. After what seems like an eternity, he finally turns, peers at you over his glasses. Oh, so you did not bring the fiddle, no? Well, I... Well, you see, your secretary we didn't tell me that... We not waste a minute, a single moment. The concert is only a week away. We must begin rehearsals as soon as possible. Rehearsals? We... You mean of I... Of course, of course, <laughs> yes. I have decided, my boy, that you shall play the concert. What have you to say to that? Uh, well, well, I... Well, don't try, I know. Your heart is pounding so in your throat, you cannot speak, <laughs> your knees are shaking, you want to run. Run to your wife. Tell her, huh? Yes, I know. Well, Dr. Kruvitz, I, I don't know how to Go, thank I'll you. I'll give you one hour. Tell your wife, then we begin to rehearse. All right, sir. And one more thing. Yes. The fiddle, yours, a good instrument, yes, but... Perhaps we should try to borrow something else for the concert. Not a Stradivarius, but a Ruggieri. Perhaps. Well, that won't be necessary. I have a... Yeah? I have a friend. He has a very fine violin. Good. For this concert, the best violin we can get. <laughs> You're a little sorry you mentioned the violin to Kruvitz, aren't you, Victor? But at that moment, nothing mattered. You forgot about the Italian village, La Vertu's murder, and the mysterious dark-skinned little man in the striped suit. No, nothing mattered. You had been selected by Dr. Kruvitz to play the concert. But now you're afraid to bring the Del Gesu around to the studio, and in the days that follow, the endless hours of rehearsal... You stall off, Dr. Kruvitz. You make excuses. Your friend is out of town. Then, on the day of the concert, after a late afternoon rehearsal, you return home to pick up the dead Jesu. Quickly, you start up the stairs. You stop suddenly on the first landing. Someone is moving around in your studio. Peggy. Yes, perhaps she isn't spending the afternoon with the Presbys after all. Peg, I warned you not to... Good afternoon, Signore Carlo. Standing in the middle of the room is the small, heavy set man in a striped suit. At his feet, the black box open. And on the table is the Del Gesu. What are you doing here? I was a curious, Signor. Now that I have found what I was looking for, well, <laughs> we have much to talk about, you know? You shouldn't have come after me, you know. That was a bad mistake. One among. I killed once for this violin. I won't hesitate to kill Senor, again. I warn you. Do not come closer. I won't or... hesitate to kill again. Ah! The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, here's good news. Brand new, up-to-the-minute roadmaps have just arrived at signal service stations in time for your summer trips. And friends, pardon my enthusiasm, but these new signal maps are without a doubt the finest I've ever seen. Prepared by Rand McNally, they have all the latest road changes and conditions, as well as many places of interest not included on ordinary maps. Jumbo in size and printed in full colors, they're easy to read and have the new accordion fold for easy handling. In addition, these new signal maps have handy extra features, such as enlarged sections of metropolitan areas. Also, a radio log showing where on the dial you'll find your favorite programs as you travel. Plus, a Western States mileage chart and a list of interesting places to see. Yes, Signal Oil Company has gone all out to bring you the finest road map obtainable. And now they're yours for the asking at any signal service station. Now, back to the Whistler.
The final movement of Victor Carroll's life concerto was coming to a magnificent climax that night at Symphony Hall. The final triumphant movement of a concerto of death. The first movement had begun in Italy six months ago, had ended with the death of La Vertu. The second movement had also ended with a murder of Dino Brovelli. And two hours later, Victor Carroll stands spotlighted on center stage. Yes, the concert was a triumph, Victor. But as you stand there, taking your bows, you're thinking of the small, heavy-set man in the striped suit who is sprawled out on the floor of your attic studio with a bullet in his heart and thinking how to get rid of him. You hurry out of the hall, the applause still ringing in your ears. Sending your wife and friends on ahead to the reception, you hurry home alone. As you slip the key into the front door, two men emerge from the shadows beside you. Mr. Carroll? <laughs> What do you want? Lieutenant Fall, FBI. I've been waiting for you. Shall we go in? I don't understand. What's wrong? You mind if I take this? My, my violin? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think this is what we're looking for. This and a uh, gent named Dino Brovelli. Brovelli? <laughs> Look, Mr. Cal, we know you spent a lot of time in Italy. Made a lot of friends there. People like this guy, Brevelli. No, no, I, I don't... Not that I blame you. Probably didn't know too much about him. Naturally, when he showed up here... I don't know... even know what you're talking about. Sure, sure. So you're trying to help this guy out. But you're not being very smart. Brevelli is wanted by the Italian police for murder. Murder? And they say he killed a man named Lavertu. To get this violin, he's trying to sell you. What? Yeah. And our immigration department would like to have a little chat with him, too. Maybe you didn't know about that either, huh? Now, look, Lieutenant. Oh, it, I... uh, it won't wash, Mr. Carroll. One of our boys saw Bervelli come in your house late this afternoon, and he hasn't come out. So, uh, play it smart, huh? Call him out. Or we have orders to search your house and find him. Well, what do you say, Mr. Carroll? Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automobile accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were David Ellis and Gene Bates. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Frank DeFilitta and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>